G'day Australia, Glenn James here. Welcome to My Millennial Money. Hi John, what's happening? G'day Glenn. Uh, heaps. Heaps happening. Mm. Well, today we are talking about how to kind of set up and manage money in your 30s. Now, a couple of things before we get into this. It's interesting because so many different people are at so many different stages of their yeah. life, right? Yes. So, we need to just step back and go, okay, what are the broad brush strokes of things that we've found important, you know, particularly me in my 30s. Mm. And then we're going to read out a heap of stuff from the community. Uh, I put it on Instagram. So, we've got some user-generated content, which is yeah. always great. Yes. But I just want this to be an encouragement. Like if you're in your 20s and listening to this, just think, how can I get one leg up and really get ready for the 30s decade? Yeah. If I'm in my 40s, how can I really think, okay, well, maybe I put the cart before the horse, maybe. Yeah. So, let's have a chat about this. We can't do this podcast without our show partner, Sun Super. So, thank you, Sun Super. There was a question in the Facebook the other day. Someone said, how do I choose the super fund, like the right super fund? Mm. And I jumped in and said, I think the first thing you need to do is call your current fund just to learn about that because I think it's good just to have a reference point. Yeah. Now, on that, Sun Super offers members uh, free financial advice over the phone for your super fund. So, if you call up Sun Super and say, hey, I've got this, this is my situation, mm. what should I do with my super? And they can give you free financial advice yeah. in relation to your super fund. Now, if it goes beyond the scope of that, they're also financial advisor friendly. There's over 3,000 advisors registered with them all around Australia. So, cool. great fund. They've just won Super Ratings 2020 Fund of the Year. Mm. So, Got thank you, Sun Super, for getting behind the podcast. All right, 30s. I'm an expert at being in my 30s. You are? Well, I am <laughs> in my 30s. You're only halfway through, I am. I'm halfway cooked, but uh, <laughs> that's all right. We'll get there. Now, I wanted to go straight out of the gate and say, based on my own experience and even looking, coaching people and assisting them with money over the years, for me, the biggest thing that I found, if I could turn back time, okay? So, if you are in your 20s and you're listening to this, yes. or if you're in your sure. early 30s, yep. And for those who don't know Sher, <laughs> check out the film clip in 1984 of her riding a cannon on a boat. I can't believe that made the airwaves, but we're here. Now, if I could turn back time, I would actually say by the time you get into your 30s, as much as possible, you really want to know yourself and what you're about. Yeah, elaborate on that. So, I got to the stage, you know, in my early, it was in my late 20s where I kind of just, I didn't have that confidence of like, oh no, I'm good at this or yeah. I've worked in this career like, I can actually hang my hat on what I know at the moment. Right. Like, and it's not in an arrogant way, but I guess just getting that level of confidence in your life yeah. that I've had some experience, I'm now in my early 30s and I want to, I don't know, turn my career up a notch, but yeah, you can't do that if you don't have any self-confidence. So, I would really encourage anyone. And even back to the whole mental illness stuff, mm. I was looking back and I often get sad when I look back at myself in my 20s and look back at the Glenn in his 20s who didn't know he had a mental health issue. Right. So, he was depressed. He was anxious. Yeah. He, I don't know how he got through it. Yeah. But I just think far out. If I could go back to 22 yeah. and think, hang on, I actually wasn't happy. I no. was actually depressed. I was having anxiety attacks, but I didn't know what it was. If I could get that sorted then. Didn't know who to turn to. My either. my 20s would have been such a better year, so or yeah. decade. Yeah. So I guess what I'm saying is into your 30s, if you actually aren't happy and or content in your life and you feel like, hang on, I shouldn't be feeling this way, mm. chat to your GP. Mm. Just get it nailed. Because we don't have time to dig around with this stuff. No, and it, and it may have been a feeling that is now the norm for someone because it's been hanging around that long. And that's what I thought. It mm. was like, oh, this is just how people feel. Yeah. Or it's like, oh, no. And it really wasn't until, for me, 2016 when I went 
overseas yeah. with my friends and their band. I was medicated and I was like, oh, my life has actually started. Yeah. So, yeah, well. it's just, you've got to- Yeah, I've lost some years there. Yeah. So, mm. I, I really feel like, yeah, I did lose, um, you know, most of my 20s. Yeah, well. And I didn't know it. No. So, now, mm. the second thing I want to kind of discuss, it's like with your career, are you actually happy with what you're doing? Yeah. <laughs> and I'm looking to John, <laughs> yeah, because I want some wisdom from John. And and I wrote down a few notes before mm. we uh, came on air, and I I said follow your dreams. Yeah. So I started a business at 25, um, not really knowing what I was doing, but at at 23, 24, I thought I was going to be in a job that I would see through for 30 years. Mm. Right, I was passionate about it. Um, yeah, that quickly changed. Long story short, you can easily stay in something that's comfortable, not actually a, a drive or a passion or a, or a bounce out of bed. Now, now you're not going to bounce out of bed every day, but you should be. It should be a seven or an eight out of ten minimum enjoyment at your workplace. I believe because it's you spend just as much time there as you do in your bed um, mm. for your whole life, or at least until you close to 60 or 70. So, yeah, I, I agree. You've, you've got to really take that leap of faith. Now, I did it mid-20s. 30s is probably a good time, but I, I don't think there's any right time. It's just when you're feeling as though you need to scratch an itch. Yeah, and I think it. we said it in the 20s episode, but it's it's hard to actually, you know, because there's no right or wrong time to start a family. No. So we acknowledge that people started a family in their twenties. We acknowledge that people start a family in their thirties and forties. Yeah. So you kind of just take it with a grain of salt. That whole, you know, the kids thing in either decade because yes. it's going to happen regardless. And yeah, and I've got some notes to drill down on that a bit in your thirties. Yeah. But yeah. But I, I guess the reason I want to touch on the kids thing now is because if you aren't nailed or happy with your career and your life choice. And there's going to be so many listeners who go, I know what he's about to say and he's 100% correct. It's so much harder to get off that conveyor belt of the job you hate and the work you don't like as soon as you have kids yeah. because you've got less time and you've got less options with taking a pay cut yeah. for a short period of time to retrain and get into something you like. Yeah. And it's not to say it's not impossible, but it just is a little bit harder to make a wholesale career transition when you've got a family. Yeah. And I think also as you as you mature and get older, I think you maybe become more risk adverse too. So you're probably less likely to change and, and do an absolute backflip on your career the, the older you get because it's perceived risk is higher. Yeah, I would agree because I don't think... I could start what I did when I was 25 today. Yeah. It's 10 years later. Yeah. I don't think I've got it in me. No. And whether that's a whole range of things, isn't mm. it? Like it's it's our mindset, it's our energy, it's it's a, a, a bottled up amount of um, courage. Like mm. there's a whole heap of things that can change that for someone. But yeah, I think that's that's true. It's it's getting it done and not sitting back in our 40s and 50s thinking, gee, I would have loved to have pursued that business mm. or that area of my life because i think like broadly if we look at the 20s 30s and 40s 20s is like working out life mm. 30s is pretty much establishment nailing stuff and then i think 40s is maybe you know you really are doubling down and building for the future yeah yeah and obviously through the podcast we talk to a lot of 20 somethings at the moment and my encouragement to them is actually build a heap of assets while you can because it's probably the best time in your life to do that. And just because of uh, maybe if you're intending on having family, you might put a, a full stop on that for a few years um, or we want our own home to live in with a larger amount of debt maybe on that home. Mm. Um so if we've got a few assets behind us before we enter that phase, I think it sets us up well for the uh, outside. Yeah, and it leads into my kind of next point around, you know, by your 30s, 
And again, there's someone who's just picked up this podcast for the first time, listened to this episode. There might be a long way from this point in their mind, but you really want to start to get your money habits nailed yeah. for good. So, all that to say, yes, at all times in your 20s, 30s, 40s, and 50s, you want to be where possible, mm. living on less than what you earn mm. and actually investing some money for the future. Yeah. Now, I know in the ebbs and flows of life, if you start a family, well, we might not have $200 a month to invest now, but we're still going to do 50 as yeah. an example. Yeah. So, Something. I think that underlying theme there, but particularly if you're in your 30s and you're listening to this now, I really want you to go stop. I need to get my life foundations in place. Mm. If you're in your 40s, stop. <laughs> I yeah. need to get my life foundations in place. So, so just for the listeners, yep. new, old or otherwise, let's list our basic foundations. Yep. So, the first, and these are just what I believe and John agrees with them because I tell him to agree <laughs> with them. <laughs> yep. Um, no, well, I think yeah, you, you would broadly the, agree. You were the creator of them. That, yeah. So, no I've got that. a sound financial house diagram and we'll pop it on the screen now. So, under the slab- We've got four foundations, okay? The first foundation is your spending plan. Mm -hmm. You must have some type of structure or system in place that helps you manage money that removes you from the process. Yes. And, you know, hundreds and thousands of you have downloaded and purchased the Glenn James spending plan. Mm. And that will just help you if you can't manage money or you're struggling to manage money or you don't have a system it just gives you the framework to do that. Yeah. And there's a link in the show notes if you want that with a little discount code for those listeners. Good on them. Um, but it basically, and I want you to outgrow that spending plan. It's just a start and that will help you start to manage your money. Yeah, so, get you on track. That's the first foundation. The second foundation is being cashed up and debt free. Now, what do we mean by that? We want to clear all consumer debt. We want to clear the personal loans from the, holiday to France two years ago that you're still mm. paying for. We want to clear the credit cards that we can't shake. We w And the spending plan will help you do this. Yeah. We want to make sure we're not doing afterpay. So, all consumer debt is, is exactly what it is. It's stuff that you've consumed. Mm. <laughs> it's, it's not going up it, in value. It's not like the, there's no, nothing like if you buy a home that you live in with debt on the mortgage, mm. there will always be something, an asset linked to that debt. Yeah. But consumer debt, it's unsecured. It's just yeah. you've got to get out of the cycle of over consuming and living on more than what you've earned. Yeah. And I just to pull up on that one, I actually went through that stage in my twenties where I had consumer debt in the form of a car loan. Mm. And I grew up a bit and realized, hang on a minute, I probably shouldn't have that. So mm. it was only really early thirties that I stopped having car debt, mm, yeah. um, which is an asset that's going down in um, value, although it's a necessity for life, isn't it, in mm, most cases? Yeah. And then cashed up, we talk about an emergency fund or a cash buffer. Yeah. So, I kind of say, and if you Google Glenn James Emergency Fund, you'll see a blog post there. There'll be an express podcast episode. We'll talk in detail about how much you should have in your emergency fund, what's an emergency mm. Um, we kind of say three months worth of expenses. If that's 16 grand and the spending plan will tell you how much you should have in your emergency fund. If it's 16 grand and you want 10 grand, knock yourself out. I don't care. Yeah. But I just want you to have an emergency cash buffer. Yeah. It's usually more than what we had previous and yep. it's a feel good sleep at night yep. experience. And then the next one is your personal protection. So, you're well into your 30s. You're well into a career. Uh, you've got an income, you need to protect it. Yeah. You might also have uh, dependents and a family. You need death cover. And I I always sound harsh, but I'm just so passionate that like you, are. you need to actually set up your sound financial house and all these things are foundations under the slab that are boring and you don't see. Yeah. I think they're non-negotiables too, aren't they? Like ever, oh, not everyone, but a lot of people say, oh, when, when, Things are tough. I'll I'll just let the insurance lapse mm. and uh, and cut some costs there. But yeah, nah. so you need to get your personal protection sorted, and a lot of that can be funded from your super fund. And then fourth um, is your will and your estate plan. Mm. Particularly if you are starting a family, if you do have assets, you just need to do this housekeeping stuff. If you're in a relationship, 
get a will, get power of attorney over each other, talk to your lawyer, a lawyer, we can help you, we'll send you somebody, mm. just get this stuff done. So, I'll swing it back around the four foundations in your sound financial house. And this, we haven't even talked about investing yet. No. We haven't talked about our goals yet. We haven't talked about, I want to learn how to be a helicopter pilot for fun mm. or whatever you wild thing we want to do because we want you to do whatever you want to do, but we want you to have the foundations in place. So, number one, a spending plan or a budget, whatever you want to call it. Number two, you don't have any consumer debt and you've got a cash buffer in your life. And so many people, John, that wrote into us and are going through COVID and said, I'm so glad I had the emergency fund. It totally. saved my ass. It's never been more important, has it? Thirdly, foundation. Uh, three, protection plans. So, your income insurances, your death cover. Mm. And then fourth foundation, your will and estate plan. So, once you've got those foundations in place, it's time to really build on what you want your life to look like. Yeah. And I think you mentioned confidence in another manner before this, mm. uh, but- it really is confidence in your financial wellness, isn't it? When you've got those foundations sorted, you've, you've got some confidence to be able to move forward. Without all those things, we can bore in and buy assets. But if a few things don't go the way we want, then we can fall on our face. You just don't want one little hiccup in your 30s. Like if you start to build your career or you start to build your assets, you just don't want one little hiccup to flush you out no. completely. No. Because you've just worked too hard. Yeah, totally. So, I think, you know, we do need to talk about family because a lot of people, and again, we can't obviously talk to everyone's unique situation, but we mm. acknowledge that people start a family in their 20s, 30s, 40s, 50s, whatever you want. Most of the people I know, and it might be going up a little bit, kind of start the family late 20s, early 30s. Um so, just speak yeah. to the, the family thing, John. Yeah, it seems to be getting a little bit later, but as you said, it is sort of case dependent. I, mm. I think prior to going into it, we, we can never forecast when we're having kids or um, the details, but we can forecast to some extent, can't we, that that may be a time in our lives where we will. So, we need to prepare maybe a few years out for that financially, I think, the the general costings, extra costings in our life. that, And it's not so much the pram and the cot and those sort of things. It's more so... Life. <laughs> it, well, yeah, but maybe my wife's going to have or my partner's going to have 12 months off. So how do we factor that into our spending, right? How is that going to change things? Do we need to put extra buffers in, in place before that comes about? Not react to it when it does and, and then try and um, survive. Yeah, and I think it does speak to that overall planning. Yeah. Like if you're in a relationship in your late 20s and you want to start to think about starting a family, can it be like, yeah, I reckon, you know, we've got a bit of a mess. We need to get our foundation set up. Yeah. Let's do that. Then we can start strong because mm. let's have a look. Like there could be situations where IVF is needed. That's right. There could be situations where a couple might want to uh, adopt or foster or and that can take a long process as yeah. well yeah so it's not just um you know let's go into the the bedroom one night and <laughs> make a child we're actually going there <laughs> um, or the kitchen wherever you, you want um it's not just that it's getting worse i think it's we can all step back and say mm. As much as we can, we should be trying to plan things. Totally. Yeah. And and this is definitely a case of do as I say, not what I do, because we did not do that. Um, you and Amy. Myself and Amy. We, so what did you did she rock up one day? Hey John, how yeah. I uh, <laughs> how was work today? PS I'm pregnant. Pretty much. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So it, it wasn't it wasn't planned. Uh, but we we were wrapped over the moon, of course. But by the same token, if we had my you know, time again, you know what they say, John. There's no unexpected pregnancies. There's unexpected parents. <laughs> That's right. Yeah. So okay, well, let's just do this. If you had your time again, yeah. How old were you when your first child arrived? Yeah. Or- well, he's he's eleven tomorrow, so that makes me thirty-two. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. So yeah, talk to us about you and Amy's journey, mm. your financial situation. How long have you got? <laughs> well, I'll give you five minutes for this segment. Yeah, no, nah, that's fair. Um, yeah, so 
as I said earlier, in, in my 20s, I was a bit blasé about uh, money in general, coming in, coming out, doing what I wanted, I suppose. But when I became a business owner, I had the mindset of, well, if I wanted something, I'd just go and work harder for it as a business owner because that's you create your own pathway and your own destiny in terms of how much money you earn, I suppose. So I took that same approach um, wrongly into uh, starting a family as well. We, we didn't, obviously it was unexpected, but by the same token, I wasn't super stressed about it like someone may get if they were on a set salary and then all of a sudden their partner had to stop work. So I, it, again, it comes back to the individual, but I, I think, yeah, if I had my time again, absolutely we would have structured it in a better manner where two years out, 12 months out even, we'd factored in more of a, I suppose, a buffer. So instead of having three months, we might have had six months because of that um, time that Amy needed off from um, from work. And how? Um, what's the gap between kids? Uh, two years and then 18 months. So, yeah. So she was basically pregnant or breastfeeding for the best part of seven years. Yeah, wow. Yeah. So, again, still blasé, didn't really know how many kids. We were maybe thinking three, p- potentially four. And that was only ruled out about 12 months ago, by the way. <laughs> A medical intervention. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That definitely ruled it out 12 months ago, or two years ago. Yeah. Um. So, yeah, that's the other part of it is if uh, if wife or partner is six or seven years part-time, mm. that's a, a fair chunk, not only with day-to-day income but superannuation that's not going in um, and there's other implications there that then they have to regain the workforce or, or get back in or is that mean retrain? Does that mean go in a different direction? So I think what I'm trying to say here is because we're running – a business, we always knew that, well, Amy could come back into the business or she could go and do some casual teaching. Mm. Um, So it was blasé, but it was still thought about. Um, Whereas someone might be listening saying, well, we're trading time for money. We're not going to be business owners. We need to really plan for this and actually put some dollars aside to, to cater for that two, three, four, five year journey. Mm. And I speak to a lot of people that are actually making this decision based on how much income they need in their life, not how many kids they want, right? Mm. And I think we just, we said, well, we want minimum three kids. However we do it, we'll do it, but we'll we'll make that happen mm. as opposed to, no, we've only got enough money for two kids or one kid. Yeah, and I think that's important to note. Like if you've got a, a wild financial situation like the extreme you started something you went bankrupt and or you you got a 10-year debt reduction strategy and obviously you're not going to put off starting a family for 10 years so i think loud and clear whatever age you are i kind of say to people it's like and again i i'm not uh, a father that i know of (laughs) um i think in just practical thinking if you had six months to clean up your mess, so set your emergency fund up, mm. clear some debt, you know, get the systems in place, you might go, okay, can we wait six months until we try and fall pregnant? Yeah. Or we want to buy a home or we want to get the investment property sorted. So if there's this short term within the year, six months, a year, yeah. but I think you will make it work if it's like, okay, well, this is a mess and it's going to take three years to clean up, yeah, I think you're not going to put a family off that long. So no. I think you just have to use wisdom and, yeah, I don't know. Yeah, and I think from what I can see, people are starting to have kids later on in life as well because of, of maybe careers, um, just that freedom, lifestyle, having experiences before they, they settle down. But um, – yeah, there's no right time. It's just whenever you feel comfortable with the, the person you're with in the life and and you make it work. But if, if you can plan before going into it, mm. uh, even if it's six months out, 12 months out, then then go for it. Because the other thing to factor in there is um, wedding and honeymoon, mm. right, which uh, can some be more costly than kids themselves in the first year. Or a home deposit. 
Well, they are a home deposit yeah. essentially, aren't they? Yeah, definitely. So, yeah, um, we went reasonably cheap on the on that side of things just because that was the time in our life and mm. um, Amy was pregnant. So, yeah. Yeah, and I think it's in, before I get onto the whole wedding and versus house deposit thing, you mentioned before, which I think is so important, like if you've got a, a spouse who's taking time off the workforce um, to be a full-time parent or part-time parent, whatever, um, if everyone Googles, uh, just Google ATO super contributions on behalf of your spouse or super spouse contribution. If, for example, John, you put $3,000 into Amy's super account mm -hmm. um, and not claim it on tax, you would get a $540 tax offset. Yep. So, you know, you could put $3,000 in there. If Amy put in $1,000, there would be a co-contribution of $500. So, we've got three, four, four and a half grand. Mm. That's basically, um, oh, and for the spouse offset, the non-working or the spouse who's receiving the money has to earn less than 40 grand a year. Yeah. So, basically, if you factored that into your budget, if possible, yeah. uh, over the time of the spouse working part-time, the soup's kind of keeping up with if they did earn 50 grand a year anyway. Yeah, so, they're getting right. three or four grand from the household and then the $500 co-contribution from the government. Yeah. So, yeah. And that, that's it. And I think those that are listening that haven't had kids yet are preparing for it. Like the the firstborn is it's the special one. It's the first time around. It's their first rodeo sort of thing. So they want to potentially buy the best of everything, right? Looking back on it, like potentially the worst thing you could do because like um, baby stores and everyone else has a nice old lend you um, mm. with such expensive clothing that lasts you three months. And I, I suppose if you were smart about that, you can be smart, but um, also look uh, as though you're looking after your kid as well, if yeah. that makes sense. Yeah, yeah. Now, moving on to like, you know, in your 30s, it might be we're going to get married. Yeah. You've really, because you've really found out, you're really both confident in who you are, you know, are you wanting the 30 grand wedding or the 40 grand wedding because you actually want that or you're getting pressure from friends, family, social networks? Yeah. Because we know a wedding cost is a home deposit yeah, or is an investment property deposit. Mm. So, we just have to say out loud, hey, we're about to commit this money. Is this the best use of our money? Yeah. And I want everyone to have a beautiful wedding. I want everyone to have a home, but yeah. we can't have everything at once. And that's why I think if you're in a, a relationship, um, it is really choosing what chicken you're going to pluck first. <laughs> totally. And not having to cough up for two or three of them. Yeah. But per per day, there's no bigger rate of expenditure, is there? Like, no, uh, like, no. Like 50 grand in, in one day. Mm. It's amazing. And I, I guess for the, you know, we talk about couples, we talk about singles, but regardless of whether you are a single person in your 30s or a couple, you need to really work out what's the, intentions for your housing or your home longer term. So, I think that is the, are we or am I saving for a deposit to buy in the area that I want to live if it's in reach or am I going to do another strategy like rent vest mm. or I'm going to rent where I want to live, but I've just got to make sure that I'm investing for my future elsewhere, whether that is an investment property, whether that is a share portfolio, whether that is I'm just going to pump super. Yeah. And if I gave one piece of advice in this space is is going into um, kids and coming out of kids or that journey, it, it's roughly 18 years, right, from mm -hmm. the time we start to the time we finish. And it's going to be a lot more than that if you've got three or four kids. I just don't know if I'm emotionally strong enough. So, that's not the worst bit, right? Oh. <laughs> I think what I see a lot of when I've, I see um, people come to me in their 50s, it's like, well, let's start investing now because the kids are growing up and we've got this surplus um, cash or we've been saving more of now we've got rid of our, our um, mortgage debt. 
my advice is continue to plow through with investing if you can through the years that you've got kids. Mm. Okay. Now I can comfortably say we've done the most investing since we've had kids, right? We, we obviously invested before kids, but we've done just as much whilst having kids. So that was our aim was to always continue to move forward. But your income has also increased. Yeah. But that was a product of, of our planning. Yeah. And, but, and that was also a product of you knew what you were about. You knew that you were happy with our career. Yes. Because there'd be nothing worse than having a family that is depending on you. And there'll be so many people listening. And I totally take my hat off to you that you've got this financial pressure at home mm. and you hate what you're doing. Oh, totally. Yeah, I no, mean, you've got to get that sort of It gives first. me anxiety to think about that pressure yeah. that's not going anywhere. Yeah, that's right. And we've just been through a period of um, uncertainty in, in a lot of people's work. Um, now coming out the other side, it hopefully people are sitting there saying, well, do I really, my, my job might not be as secure as I first thought. Do I mm. really want to be in here? Because I thought I was here for the security, but now I'm not sure. Mm. I think once you nailed you know, the housing situation and what you're going to do there, I think in your 30s, particularly if you don't have kids, mm. you're doubling down on investing for your future more so than your 20s. Yeah, 100%. And that, I think, goes back to what you said at the start. It's a accumulation of a whole range of things, isn't it? Mm. It's maturity, it's it's confidence, it's having our assets grow, it's, it's just experiencing life more to be able to make some good decisions and continue to take action. Yeah. And I think, you know, you might say, oh, Glenn, um, I've got my 9.5% super. Yeah, everyone's got that. Like, what can you do that's extra? Yeah. And as a broad brushstroke, like if I was flippant and someone said, oh, should I invest in super or, you know, use the offset account, as a broad brushstroke, you're probably not going to default to super when you're under 30 because of the restrictions in place. Yeah. But it might be, well, over the next 10 years, I'm going to pump a share fund or, an, a, you know, Vanguard ETF or something like that yeah. just to extra money, long-term savings. Yeah. And then this might be scaring a lot of listeners, but towards the end of your 30s, you're probably going to start thinking about putting away some money for the kids. Mm. So you've got yourself sorted, hopefully. And now you're starting to think about, well, kids' funds for house, uni, whatever it may be. that, that Private um, high school. Oh, that's another level again. So, yeah, yeah that's the, you've got to be thinking about those sort of things. You can't just one day wake up and say, right, we're going to private school. Mm. So yeah. yeah, so you're pretty much saying in your 30s, if you are in a relationship and you do want to have the kids' discussion, you've got to be very clear or at least have some intent. It's like, okay, we want to start a family. What are our views on schooling? Yeah. I mean, just have the discussion. Totally. Yeah. And and Because I guess if I can just finish on that, John, mm. the worst thing would be in your early 30s is to get an investment property or something like that. And then, oh, we want to send the kids to private high school. Oh, we can't afford to negatively gear the investment property because we've got to pay for private school. So, yeah. we've got to sell the investment properties. Yeah. So, I think that whole investing for your future where possible, when we commit something to investing, we shouldn't need to realize it in the short term. No. Under 10 years. No, that's right. Yeah. And and the views is a really important one because if you're going along married, having kids, and then all of a sudden one of you wakes up and, and realize that they've always wanted private schooling and no one's talked about it, like that's a half a million dollar conversation straight away. Right, and that's after tax money. Mm. So, yeah, it's a it's a lot of um, financial burden for the potential benefit of uh, of the kids' education. So, yeah, for those listening, I I kind of want your thirties to be a fun year as well. Yeah, and I've kind of written down this like, can you set up your thirties so you can actually plan a good holiday without it being a huge financial blowout? Mm. Like, because how many people in their 20s, and if you are listening in your 20s, don't do this. That's right. Don't go overseas with a personal loan. Yeah. Because you'll take, I kind of, 
I call it like you're spending tomorrow's prosperity mm. today. You just can't do that. So, in your 30s, you've got all your foundations nailed. You've got good savings and money habits. You're happy with your career ideally. Saving three grand for a banging trip somewhere, yeah. it shouldn't be the end of the world. It should be a fun experience because you know what you're about. You're confident. You you might have some friends that are going with or you go yourself. Yeah. So, I, I think the whole travel thing and life experiences can really be turned up a notch because you just, you've just you got so much more. You've got 10 years of life on you than someone in who's 20 years old. Yeah. So, you know what? You want to enjoy. Yeah, it's a, it's a good combination because you're mature enough to make some good decisions, but you're not too old that you haven't got enough energy to enjoy the trip. Like, mm. I, I think you should be having a, a trip every year, right? And that, mm. that might be just a three or four night camping trip somewhere. Mm. Like it doesn't have to be elaborate, but you might have one decent one overseas every four or five well, years. Well, this is for me, 2020 with COVID, I just had an email uh, from Qantas that they're cancelling that trip that oh. I had to the States in September for yeah, a conference, right. it'll be the first time that I haven't been overseas since 2011. Yeah. It's a good effort. Yeah. But it goes back to it's like when I was in my early 30s, my late 20s, I really made sure that my foundations were in place. Yeah. And I make no apologies for traveling every year. No. At least twice. Yeah, that's right. Because I had everything in order. But I didn't have a family. I well, acknowledge I was that say, as well. And, and it speaks to this other part of um, society that may decide, well, I'm, I'm going through life, not going to have any kids. Mm. Like, you don't need to worry about retirement, buddy. You're already there. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> You've just saved yourself a couple of mil. <laughs> I'm just going to have, like, kids and get them to be, like, a golf player and tennis player. <laughs> yeah. Well, you still got to get them there for the first yeah. 18 years. Ugh. Mm. Um, I want to open Instagram now, John. Yeah. Because I think there's a lot of comments here. There's hundreds of comments uh, that people have sent in about managing money in their 30s. Yeah. Jay Skill said secure and growth, secure and stable growth assets. The official Timothy Gore said, or Timmy Gore said, paying enough of my house to have an easier 40s and 50s. So that's an interesting one. Like, you're not over committing to your home. Mm. So we say we want your mortgage repayment or your rent to be around 25% or less than of your net take home income. Yeah. I think if you can live lean now, it just, you know, if you punch your mortgage out over 10 years, even, yeah. Imagine the quality of life you could have in your 40s. Totally. Yeah. It's, it is an interesting one and you can go on for days about it because some would argue that oh, we get a bigger mortgage to be in a better location, which is going to give us better growth long term. Mm. Depends on what you want lifestyle wise, doesn't it? Totally. Uh, Eloise says laying the foundations for the future. Well, we've talked about that. Amy says business, home, family, planning and travel. This is interesting as well. Evangeline Having goals for each area to ensure one doesn't take over you and you lose the best years of your life. Yeah. Well, what are the best years? Well, I don't know. I think, uh, and, and that's probably See, I don't know if the 40s or 50s are my best years because I'm not there yet. There. Yeah. Well, I'd like to think we're, we're Well, living... you're in your 50s, John. What... <laughs> Nathan, just cut this here now. <laughs> uh, I'd like to think we're enjoying living, living our maximum all the time. Mm. Jen says career change, more meaning, purpose, satisfaction. And that was a big theme. And that's why I said at the top, it's like, are you happy? Yeah. Are you satisfied with what you're doing? Yeah. Do you know what you're about? Totally. So that, that was a good one. And then she also said defining money goals and nailing the right savings versus investment strategy. Michael says finding the right partner. Because how many like stories do you hear? Oh, I put up with them for 10 years. Yeah. What was I doing? I lost the best years of my life and yeah. all this stuff. Um, so, John, relationship tips for those out there. <laughs> Jeez, oh, all I'd say is I'd, I'd hate to be uh, back in the market right now trying. <laughs> <laughs> I think, I don't know, it's a, it's a really, it's an interesting one. Like, I think when you know, you know, like, uh, and I, it's a bit cliche, but you just, you do I, like I've never 
and and I'm not trying to get all emotional mm. and uh, mm. but I think before Amy like I just uh, had never felt the same way so I think you once you know you know do you believe this is so not to do with money do you believe there is such thing as the one or do you make someone your one well yeah I think there's more than one out there for you, but you get a feeling that the one. Oh, so you're saying that Amy's not good enough? There's another one? I, no, no. I, haven't, I haven't seen anyone better, no. <laughs> um, it's so funny. It's like, I found my soulmate. They were in the postcode like 20 minutes down yeah, the road. Because if there was only one for you, the odds are pretty slim of oh, finding them, screwed. Aren't they? Yeah, no right. one would be partnered. <laughs> so, yeah. Anyway, having a bit of fun, people. Yeah. Uh, Vici says, by the time I'm 40, actually having my shat together. So, that's that's an interesting one. It's like, wherever you are mm. in your 30s, stop. There is no time if you do not have your foundation sorted to get serious. Yeah. No, that's right. And if, you, if you're in your 20s listening, this is so cool because you can get a bit of a leg up on this information. Um, Chanwa says, listen to this podcast five to 10 years prior to turning 30. <laughs> Emma says, good foundations and habits, goals and plans to get what you want. S.S9 said, financial security for the future to retire comfortably. Alicia says, setting up a plan for a growing family. So, that's, it is a common theme, isn't it? The yeah. family thing. And I think that speaks to if you are buying a home, is it temporary? Are you buying it and will renovate in five years or will use it as a stepping stone? I, it's just, it's a whole kettle of fish. Yeah. And understanding your personalities with that as well. Like uh, you, you may be open to renting while you've got family, whereas others just wouldn't entertain it. So, you've got mm. to prepare for both. Laura.yes says, I'm late 20s and so keen to hear what others say um, slash all this podcast, I need help. So, if you're in your late 20s, there's no reason why you can't get all these foundations nailed because you only need to save your emergency fund once. Mm, totally. You only need to get your insurances once. Just don't blow it. Just like you only need to do the foundations once if you do them right. Yeah. And then it's just maintenance. Yeah. So, that's going to just give you the biggest leg up. Law Newton says, enjoy life, save some cash. And only do work that is meaningful. Again, this theme of actually knowing what you're about. Because I, yeah. I I kind of said like a previous episode, John, like if I was 25 when I started my business and I guess there's one point that I didn't say that we kind of covered it. Like if you do think you've got a business in you and you're in your 30s and you've been thinking about it for five years or two years or whatever, do it now. Like, if you've only got young kids, do it now. If you don't have kids, do it now because it's just the best time because it can – you just don't know what life's going to flick up at you. No, and that, I was just about to say that. If you just don't want to look back with regrets, um, at least if you have a crack at it and it doesn't go the way you planned, you've, you've, um, you've mm. scratched the itch, haven't you? Yeah, and I like this one as well, which I kind of touched on before with the housing thing. Sarah Kate Seven says, turning 30 this year, priority is upgrading my own home and using my current home as an investment. So, if you do, if you are single or if you are newly married or if you're a couple and you want to buy a house, mm. having the conversation, well, what's this property for? Is it just we're living here, we're renovating it and we're happy with the area or we will buy well strategically Offset account, we'll live in it for five years, then we'll buy, quote unquote, a home. Yeah, that's right. There's so much good stuff in here. Mm. Shell says, foundations for life ahead, investing in well-being, physical and mental and financial. So, that's so important. Yeah, Hannah Hannah Bird, our friend of the show, says, don't forget about health. Mm. Financial is just only one component on mm. life, isn't it? Yep. It's just that we talk about it on the podcast. That's our focus. But- yeah, it all uh, all comes back to a whole range of everything. Mm. Chili says, life, happiness and take care of family, invest for future, work on interesting projects, career. Uh, Steph says, I'm only just 30, but 
I'm really keen to have emergency savings uh, for about three months. And Sophie Sullivan says, life, stay grounded and be happy. Money, invest, save and be happy. Career, do what makes you happy. So, for all of us, if I'm speaking on behalf of the people in their 30s to those in their 20s, don't waste time on doing crap that you don't enjoy. And that I forgot to say it before. If I was starting my business now in my 25s, I just put up with so much crap from people I didn't need to deal with. Yeah. Where I, I thought, oh, I've got a business. I've got to serve you. It's like, no, you're a pain in the ass. Yeah, but I, I think you need to experience- You've kind of got to, to go, go, go through, through it, that. don't you? Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's, yeah. it's something you can't do because someone tells you to. No, but you can have guidance for someone who's been there. Like, you could definitely well, tell someone I've, that. Well, I think it's more in the coaching. It's like, okay, well, Glenn, who was 26, you just didn't have a good um, idea of your ideal client. Yeah. So, maybe in your 20s, you don't really have a good idea of what your ideal life looks like. Yeah. And as a result, you attract the clients that mm. you are at the minute. There's another one here, debt, like reducing debt, increasing additional super payments. And just on the super thing, like if you did, I'm just making up a number, $50 a month into your super, out if you pay salary sacrifice, you wouldn't even notice it. It's going to no. be of no detriment. No. It's only going to be of a blessing for you later in life. Yeah. Like everyone's talking about do what makes you happy and, and happiness is the key. I, I'd be writing down the top three to five things that, that make you happy mm. and, and just living by them and, and ask yourself, are we, are we living to those? She's money savvy says, still trying to find myself a sugar daddy, which, <laughs> yeah, I know it's a bit tongue in cheek, but it might not come. No. A man is not your plan, darling. No, no, no. But no, that's a bit of fun. Yeah, there's a lot here on careers, debt-free, safer in investment property, having slash funding kids, emergency fund, buying a property, letting go of others' expectations. That's a huge one, isn't it? Mm. Again, it's a life experience thing where you mm. realize, look back and think, why did I bother? Yeah, so as an example, in your 20s, you might just be in a situation you might be, Oh, yeah, uh, okay. In your 30s, you just got your finger up, like stuff you- Or you have. Yeah. Yeah. Some wait till their 40s. Yeah, that's right. But also, if you are listening in your 40s or 50s, don't, again, feel underwhelmed or overwhelmed with it all. You've just got to address where you're at now and and just tick off the boxes that we've discussed. Mm. Yeah, there's no right or wrong. No. And realistically, it's just these episodes- they probably don't need to be called 20s, 30s, and 40s. It's just a bit of a theme. Yeah. But what can you do in your life? Because there's stuff that from Alex in the 20s that I learned. Yeah. There's it's just, just that, common themes that happen more often than not in mm, those decades, don't they? But yeah. You shouldn't be comparing yourself to someone in, at the same age or… No, no. Well, John, thanks for the chat. And yeah, remember, pleasure. guys… Um, Jump in the Facebook group. There's lots of good chat in there. But I just I'm looking at all these. Like, let's see all these, John. Amazing. Yeah, like all these like things from Instagram, hundreds of them. So many switched on individuals. And I think it's just that theme. If we're looking at theme, it's we're not putting up with chat in our career. No. We're getting out of debt. We are building for the future. We're considering family. And that's why I kind of started the Gen Z Money podcast for under 24s because someone in at 22, yeah. they're more interested in how much should I spend on my first car, yeah. where again, you really work out what matters in mm. your 30s. Oh, I'm over it. Who cares? Just, that's right. <laughs> so, it's, yeah. it's just so different. Okay. Community member of the week is Bonnie. Woo! 32 from Gundawindi in Queensland. Have you been there? I haven't, but I do need to get there. I heard it's... Pretty cool. Civil engineer. The financial goal is to build up my buffer from three to six months and ultimately up to 12 months. How she's achieving this goal. Stop spending money on shit that I don't need. My That'll do it. <laughs> my, my partner and I now do an end of month financial checkup to see how we went against our savings target. Awesome work. Uh, I'm finding that accountability is really helping. That's, that's good. And how old's Bonnie? 
Bonnie is 32. Yeah, so... Yeah. That's... Uh, s- still to come. Yeah. Silliest money mistake. Oh, yeah, yeah. I love this. I've bought and sold three new cars in the last three years. Oh. Sounds like Glenn. Uh. I've finally ended up with the right car that's perfect for me and my hobby, which are horses. Trust me, buying the horse is the cheap part. I plan on keeping this one for 10 years at least. Well done, Bonnie. Thanks for shouting out. Love you, Bonnie. Thanks for listening. And if you are after, if you want to feature yourself in the Community Member of the Week, just search the Facebook group, Community Member of the Week, and there's probably a link in there somewhere where you can send us a bit of info and a photo of yourself because we'd love to profile you. Uh, But you can find us on YouTube. You can find us on Instagram and Facebook. And if you are listening on Apple, we would value a little healthy review thank you so much yeah thank you and thanks John for having a chat about money in your 30s pleasure we're going to have to work out what we're going to do in the 40s yeah have a bit of a chat about a bit of a yarn about that as well should we get someone in for that yeah I think so yeah sweet alright alright bye bye bye